Welcome to part three, and um, by the looks of things, it's about to get sexy. Kenneth Mulvaney opened his eyes in the dark. Moonlight no longer flooded the wall. There was only a faint reflection from the argent puddle that spilled across the foot of his bed. The voice of Joan Jordan sounded in the room. You're awake now. He swiveled his head, blinking in consternation. The moonlight glowed on the naked body of the girl sitting at his feet. He started to sit up, then drew back, ashamed for her. Her eyes gleamed feverishly, bright. White breasts throbbed with the rapidity of her breathing. She murmured in ecstasy, isn't it a lovely moon? Words strangled in Mulvaney's throat. After all, he broke out hoarsely, isn't this a bit... He choked then, and his face and neck burned. The girl laughed, matching the silver of her voice against that of the moon glow. The sound of it was nave in gene what? The sound of it was nave ingenuous. This was a different Joan Jordan. Yeah, no shit, right? Than the girl he had met that afternoon. He wondered apprehensively if she still possessed her reason. Yeah. Yeah, he wondered that. Without knowing or understanding, he realized the effect the change had wrought in her. She did not know she was naked, not in the sense she would have that afternoon. She was as innocently naked as Eve in the garden before the fall. His feeling of shame for her went away. It was best to humour her. He smiled in the dark. Oh, man. She smiled in return. The moonlight glinted from tiny, sharp teeth. Astrally brilliant against the blood red of her lips. In spite of her... In spite of their sparkle, the blue eyes remained curiously blank. Mulvaney found that he was no longer surprised at her being there, even though he did not know the motive of her presence. And he did not think it strange that her gleaming body cast no shadow in the moonlight. It was only a point he noticed in passing. Fuck you, slow. You have no shadow, he remarked. Of course not. The moon is full. I had no shadow tonight in the lamplight, he continued. No, you wouldn't have. The moon is full, and you are one of us. The repetition irritated him. Oh man, this goes through a range of emotions. I always had a shadow before. Things are different in the valley. Mulvaney was get bigger there. Mulvaney was beginning to believe that they were. I don't understand you at all, he said petulantly. She threw back her golden head. And her slim, white body arched in the moonlight, red lips parted breathlessly. Hurry, the full moon calls. He thought of his clothes in the chair across the room. My clothes, he began. The change in her, he could not define it. But he knew she would not understand about the clothes. Come like this. Oh, no. Come like this, he asked feebly. Yep. Feeble is the way I would describe him for sure. She sprang, she sprang gracefully to her feet, eyes sparkling. She nodded eagerly and held out her hand to him. Mulvaney would not have been astonished had she stepped out of the window and floated lightly to the ground. See, he is the most inconsistent character I've ever read. He would have followed heroically after her. She did nothing of the kind, however. She took his hand and led him down the stairs to the front door. Then they were treading barefoot through the soft grass, and he felt the caress of the night wind on his body. Pinch me, Mulvaney said. I want to know if I'm dreaming. Joan Jordan, the new Joan Jordan, laughed. <laughs> Up into his questioning face. She sobered quickly. Tell me, Kenneth. How did you pres- mm. Tell me, Kenneth, how did your parents die? Strange way to begin that question. He frowned and remained at Stubborn Lee's Island. I'm so tired of the valley, Kenneth. I plan to leave it soon. I may, it may someday save my life to know. 
Oh, oh, if his parents, how they died. Okay. She was mad. He could no longer doubt it. What had he let himself in for? Suppose the fierce inhabitants of the town should find them naked together like this. Yeah, they'd be pretty freaked out. He thought of horsewhips and rails and feathers and, and tar pots. Tar and feathered, oh my god. Things are getting a little bit deliverance. Oh, moving on. Nonetheless, some of the girl's ecstatic exuberance flowed into him. Abandonment began to throb in his veins. The accident suffered by his parents so long ago seemed somehow less personal than it had. I was only six when it happened. They, were sw oh, they went swimming and drowned. Oh, she sounded disappointed. Is that all? Fuck, oh, bitch. No, we lived on a farm. A neighbour loved some of his stock. Wolves, he said. He'd seen them crossing the irrigation ditch between our two places. My folks always enjoyed swimming in the ditch on... Moonlit nights. That is weird. He halted and looked at her suspiciously. Go on, she breathed. They went out one night to swim. They didn't come back. Our neighbour found them the next morning drowned in the ditch. But how? Not both. It couldn't just happen. No, our neighbour had secretly set traps under the water for the wolves, he claimed, to have seen crossing there. What? Oh, a horror... Mm. Oh, horror throbbed in that... There's a lot of throbbing in this story, I've noticed. Just, just putting it out there. Oh, horror throbbed in the cry. Then... The wolves, did they ever come to his farm again? I don't know. I was sent away to an orphanage. Her white forehead wrinkled. Sometimes the ranchers around here set wolf traps, but never underwater. That's too cruel, and also why the fuck would they? Perhaps Mulvaney was beginning to guess the truth. Perhaps he preferred to believe that both of them were... delightfully mad. Oh. Oh, he and the girl, right, yeah. <sighs> Thought of the truth was so devastating. And worse than madness, for the moment, he was content to reject the thoughts that, pound, that pounded in his brain. Yeah. It's sexy time. There was a primal joy to trotting across the soft pasture in the moonlight. The thrillingly naked girl at his side, aw. Oh. The moon was reflected in silver spangles from the dark, massive leaves of the cottonwoods along the creek. They paused in the shadows where the bank dipped down to the cool, dark waters. The, cool, the girl put both hands on his chest, forcing him to sit. Her vibrant young body was trembling with eagerness. Don't move, she whispered. Don't move, she whispered. Watch me. A stray shaft of moonlight flashed upon her marble skin. She dipped into the creek, rolled over in the shallow water, flanks gleaming. He could see He could see the water foam and the girl's bottle the girl's body struggling. Then she poured towards shore, emerging. It was not Joan Jordan, but a huge dog like beast. White fur from slim muzzle to graceful hunches. A wolf! Mulvaney started to get up, a cry rising in his throat. The white wolf whipped around and plunged into the creek. Joan Jordan emerged, naked and dripping. <sighs> the breath whistled out of Mulvaney's lungs. A bad night, seeing things. The girl touched his bare shoulder with a cool, wet hand. You see? Now you do it. Oh. <laughs> you see? Now you do it. She pulled him to his feet, pushed him to the water's edge. Mulvaney's senses swam. It was out of all reason. He wanted to back away and run. Then he saw Joan, naked in the stream, dark water gurgling about the white thighs. He plunged forward. The white wolf galloped out on the bank. Kenneth Mulvaney poured after her. He found, fo he found footing in the mud, lunged toward the shore. 
a thousand scents he had never known before swarmed upon his consciousness. The night was bright with a new acuteness of vision. He threw back his head to laugh aloud in sheer joy of living. Sleek grey muzzle lifted to the moon, and Kenneth Mulvaney howled as a wolf howls, fiercely, savagely, with the eternal sorrow and loneliness of the wolf kind. Then he roamed with the white she-wolf. The sky was a field of blazing gems, the earth a garden of paradise, but she quickly ended their play. We don't run alone here, the others are walking. Bok will be angry. Mulvaney trotted obediently at her flank. He wanted to stay and romp, but Bok Martin, oh wait, we're going to call him Doc, weren't we? Doc Martin said the pack must run together. It was different before Doc came, the she-wolf told him. He hunted deer in the mountains. Doc came out of the outside. No. Doc came from the outside. He made himself our leader. He insists we attack cattle. And men! Men have guns, he said, bringing the thought into his wolf brain with a vicious tug. We don't fear guns, Kenneth, only silver. Silver kills our kind. Men know that. When they realise what we are, they can arm against us. No, I don't know, not all of them. That is our danger from men. Another is the day. Never let dawn find you in wolf form. Oh, really? The she-wolf quickened her pace. On the other side of the low mound, they found the wolf pack waiting. Mulvaney's... Mulvaney... Mm. Mulvaney stood atop the knoll. Strong wolf leg braced, grey fur... Greyford ears cocked forward and received their vicious, no, no, received their voiceless greeting. A great black wolf rose crouching from the midst of the pack and slunk forward, belly hugging the ground. Despite the change in form, Mulvaney knew that this black beast was Bock, Doc Martin. The hackles lifted on his sturdy shoulders and he growled ominously, don't, the she-wolf, don't, the she-wolf. It's Buck, Doc. The slinking black wolf glided nearer. Mulvaney crouched, heaving loins pressed against the cold earth. The grey-furred muzzle wrinkled hatefully. Deadly fangs glinted in the moonlight. Um, I'm not sure if we'll finish recording now. I, I'm not sure because. I'm, not, I'm just not even sure at this point how much storage my phone can handle. It has. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm. Hey, I feel a little better than I did last night and the night before. So that's something. Um, but I think I'm coming down with the cold. I think it's going around. You know, uh, it's meant to be summer, but it's actually been up and down weather-wise. Yesterday it was a little cold, which sucked. Um, I, I don't know. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. Uh, I hope you continue to join me for um, the adventures of Doc, Kenneth, and Joan. I look forward to seeing what's happening. Um, hey, kitty. Hi, bud. Thanks for joining me. I decided to film more because I, there wasn't nearly enough and I, I don't want to give up, so... Fuck the storage issue. Let's continue for a little bit, shall we? Alright, so where were we? Ah. Doc Martin was evil. Mulvaney sensed that now, as he never had before. He'd been older and wiser in the ways of the Wolfman. Doc Martin would have... Doc Martin would not have mattered. But Kenneth Mulvaney had never committed an evil in his, an evil in his life. It was through no fault of his... He was one of the Ware people. The training of his years in the orphanage was strong within him. I don't know what 
ones that are training you get in an orphanage. Life training. Like in any. With hate-filled eyes and the promise of death in his snarling jaws, he awaited the sneaking advance of the sable hound of hell. Mulvaney had the advantage of height. When he saw the beast crouching and trembling for the leap, he lunged... Nope. He launched his body forward. The wolf people stood by. In silent fear, as the flashing grey-furred shape streaked upon its enemy. Mulvaney's mind was the mind of a wolf. He was not afraid. The hot blood pounded fiercely and pounded fiercely in his veins. He was a new wolf, a young wolf. He had strength and advantage. Cunning did not matter. Snapping, snarling, growling hideously, the black and grey threshed down the slope. The two were a tangle of legs and muzzles, of bushy tails and hard whipcord muscles. They fought as wolves fight, fang to fang and claw to claw. Rage and murderous hate flamed in Mulvaney's wolf brain. His man brain looked, no, his man brain looked askance, observed what he did and approved. Buggy. Go on. Well, go on. Go. I hope you can hear that. And approved. The night was made fearful with their hate. Their snarling rage struck silence and terror to the tiny denizens of the field. The moon and the stars looked on impassively. Cool. Mulvaney sought with murderous fangs a throbbing jugular of his the throbbing jugular of his enemy. His jaws ached for the feel of thick, hot blood spilling over them, gnashing his teeth. Gnashing teeth bit into the black wolf's tender gore. The beast panted frenziedly, clawed at Mulvaney's... Clawed at Mulvaney's ribs and flanks. The grey wolf sank its fangs deeper into the hot flesh. And then he went spinning, bewilderingly end over end to the land, crashing a dozen, mm, dozen yards away. The where people whimpered, a voice croaked hysterically, the master, the master. Confused with shock, bruised and gasping, the wolf shape of Kenneth Mulvaney drew trembling legs under itself. The solid earth seemed to roll maddeningly, and he whined it with pain. The thunderous symphony pounding in his brain receded and grew faint. He lifted his muzzle and sent it fiercely for the black wolf. A biting, acrid ogre, odor. A biting, acrid odor dug at his sensitive nostrils. The reek of glowing sulfur. And then he saw the shape. Shape with a capital S. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. It was cloaked with the blackness and the stink of the pit, evil of eye and visage, black, grim, utterly hideous. The hair rose on the grey wolf's back. The snarl the, <laughs> the snarl gnarled deep in the panting chest. Purplish lightning what? Purplish lightnings flickered in the gloom that clothed the hateful shape. The demon's silence was its most utter terror. Mulvaney struggled against the fear that ate at his heart. The monster, the monster spoke, capital M, the monster. The solitude resounded with the whiplash of its voice. Neither men nor werebeast can destroy me, Kenneth Mulvaney. I have tested you and found you strong. Strength be in the evil you shall do for me. In my stead, from now on, you shall lead the pack, and shall render unto me these souls one by one as death shall claim them. It was for this purpose I sent that call of the valley into your being, where you roamed outside and did not know yourself. The grey wolf snarled its hatred. One more bit. Let's let's do one more bit, and then we'll finish up. Hate is my strength. The prince of evil derided him. I'm I'm assuming the prince of evil is you know the shape monster. 
So like the devil. All my loyal subjects hate me. <laughs> Fuck. They serve me well, nonetheless. But remember, I hold your souls in bondage. Ah! <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, all right. When you shall die, they shall be rendered unto me and my kingdom of the dead. Ah, that's that. This is your portion of who you are, the descendants of the witch folk of Eld. L spelled E L D. I guess that means olden times. Through the years, I have gathered this man together in my valley, the valley, yeah. to increase and become strong, to battle the race of men for supremacy. The ancient practices shall return. The ancient laws shall be in order, not in this century nor the next, but by and by. Eternity is not too long to wait for my vengeance. The shape fell silent. A brooding, awful silhouette against the sleeping, wil wil sleeping wolf of a stone mountain. That is confusing. Of a stone mountain that jutted into the star-spangled sky at the head of the valley. The sooty lips moved again. Now, Kenneth Mulvaney, be gone with your shadowless curse. Be gone with your shadowless curse. You've worked, you've worked to do tonight. You know, if you're gonna be like the boss of a bunch of people, you'd want to probably be a bit nicer to them. I don't know. Something's bound to go wrong. Whimpering with fright, the pack broke and flee. Fled. No less defiant, the grim grey wolf retreated down the slope, and with him cowered the white she wolf. When Mulvaney looked again, the shape had disappeared. The night was clear and cool. From far away, his fury, his very ears caught the st caught the tinkle of water splashing in the creek. He understood now. He knew he was a werewolf descended from werewolves. Yeah. The circumstance of his parents' death was no longer a mystery. No, nor was the soulless look in his eyes, and those of these others without expression, nor the lack of shadow to follow them. They were all of the same tribe. They all bore the evil taint. The thought was a hateful one. What unholy pact with Satan had made this possible? Though with many m misty eons of time, had it continued to... F Man, this is a little florid. Just a little... I mean, I know I can talk, but this is... It's, um, no, actually, no. Fuck it. It's not that florid. Whose dark deeds and hellish desires had brought about this unwilling bondage upon generation unborn. Yeah, who? These were questions Mulvaney might never answer. The truth was sealed with the silence of time. He knew instinctively that the were-beast glorified in its unclean condition. Some strains of the human in him found it repulsive. He would find a way to deliver from them from their detestable slavery. But how? Could they return to the state of men and defeat the purpose of the beast? Beast by refusing to serve? Yeah, yeah, well, maybe. The thought was a vain one. The pack had gathered around him, and the moon shone pitilessly down. The ground under each having heaving belly was bright with its glow. The were folk, folk had no shadows, and no, yeah, we know that. We know that. And no souls. I don't know. I, I question that. Um, they have souls, just they don't belong to them. Tonight we drink or we die, spoke the grizzled old wolf. Can you lead us to fresh blood, Kenneth Mulvaney? Mulvaney was aware of the thirst that had begun to torment his own throat. The moon had passed the zenith and time was short. They must make the kill before dawn. It was their portion, their fate. The problem confronting Mulvaney could not be solved before they had fed, as feed they must. Into his wolf brain crept the image of the cattle kitty. That's annoying. Where am I? Into his wolf brain kept the image, uh, crept the image of the cattle that had grazed contentedly in the fields, but they belonged to the villagers. It was senseless to kill them and rob themselves. The grey wolf threw back its head, muzzled to the moon, and howled. 
The keening cry released hot excitement into his feverish veins. The blood of the witch folk of old Ireland awoke in him, exultant and maddening. He debarred he the yeah, all right. He debarred <laughs> He departed towards the nearest pine-clad slope of a swift, easy lop. At a swift, easy lop. At his flank, the white she-wolf, fierce joy and pride blazing in her eyes. Behind them streamed the wolf pack, silent as shadows. Yeah, even though they don't fucking have any. Shadowless as they sped. Yeah, of course. Nice play on words, buddy. Bannister. Bannister. Hmm. So, it looked like Bob got, Doc got his ass kicked. Couldn't really, no. I think we all saw that coming. Uh, so, what do you think? Do you think they're gonna rise up against Satan and release themselves from this awful bondage? Are they gonna kill men? What's the priest all about? Uh, all these questions will be answered and more in the preceding uh, parts of this series. Satan's Bondage by Manly Bannister. Thanks for joining me.